This is a question I actually get a lot is, you know, what's a, the best process for onboarding an agent? So you just hired someone, congratulations. And like, now what do you do, right? Especially if it's your first hire or you're hiring a couple of them at the same time even. So it can be a little intimidating, but actually it's not that hard. So here's the thing, start off obviously with your paperwork. So you need to have an independent contractor agreement. You've got to have them fill out a W-9. I always had people fill out a little sheet that just told me, you know, like their, their cell phone number, who to call, in case of emergency, if they've got a personal email, you know, their address and things like that. So you've got a little file started for them. So you want to put all that together. And as you're doing your hiring paperwork, just think through if you do provide leads for your agents, what happens to those leads if they leave? And so you want to think through what that process is going to be if they leave, because don't assume people will always be with you forever. Agents, unfortunately, do come and go and you try to retain as many of them as you can for as long as you can. But unfortunately, things do happen. So if you give them leads, does that lead belong to you or do they get to keep it? What about their listings? You know, do they owe you a referral fee on certain things? And what's that process going to look like? And that's really all you have to do when you do your paperwork is just think backwards to like, if they leave, what, what you know, what is that going to look like? Make sure everything's clearly spelled out about how their compensation plan. You know, if they have, if they do deals on their own properties, personal properties, what about their family and friends and stuff like that? Just think through those things, spell everything out clearly, obviously have an attorney review it. And then there you go. So there's your hiring path. So there's step one. Now, the next thing to think about is they've got to go sign up for the MLS and the Realtor Board, right? So get your applications from both of those places, figure out how to fill them out. It's maybe been a long time since you had to fill one out as a new agent, figure out where you need to sign them. I always got those pre-populated with, you know, if it has to have the company address and the company phone number on there, have copies of that so you can just grab them and you don't have to do that every single time whenever you have to do something more than once or twice you should make a system for it and you should make it easier for the next time whenever you find you're having to do the same thing over and over just try to create a system and then once you get those applications filled out then find out like what they have to do so when they sign up at the Realtor Board, they usually have to go do a new member orientation. It's a couple hour class. They usually have to do live in person. And then now they've got their code of ethics training. And I think it's three hours and that's online. And it's a special one that new agents have to take. So figure that stuff out. So you understand it and you can, you know, they're certainly not going to understand it. So you've got to be able to explain that to them and help keep them on track. Because within 60 days of signing up at the Realtor Board, if they don't do that stuff, they're going to get kicked out. And so, and then you get in trouble. So you have to be careful about stuff like that find out what classes the MLS not only offers but which ones are mandatory usually they have a new member orientation too but often they offer a lot of different classes that will teach them how to do a CMA how to search and stuff like that that'll save you a ton of time so get that schedule and figure out you know how you can put your agents into that and I'm talking mostly about new agents by the way and then for a training program think through all the things that you have to teach a new agent and just start writing them down you're gonna forget some things and that's okay but think back to when you were new, you had to learn how to use your lockbox key. You had to learn how to talk to other agents. You had to write contracts. I mean, there's so many things that you had to do. So just try to make a list of all that stuff the best you can. And then you start making your training program based on that. Now, not all agents you're going to bring on obviously are new, but that's kind of the biggest thing you have to deal with. Now, if they're coming over and they're experienced and they're coming from another brokerage, you've got to find out if they have existing escrows right now. And what's going to happen? Is that going to close at their current brokerage and they've got to turn in paperwork over there. That's typically what happens. Or is that brokerage going to release the paperwork and give it back to you? And then you now own the, the um, you know, that escrow. And so then what happens? Do they have to pay back a referral fee? What kind of a form transfers it? Kind of the same process with listings. Do they have to cancel the listing, re-sign with you? Is there a transfer form that's usually required by the MLS? But find out what you need to have in your file too to protect yourself. And then think about They've probably got a sign up there if it's been on the market at all. We got to take that down and put on our sign. So, you know, maybe the lockbox needs to get changed. There's little things like that that you basically just have to do your research. A lot of it is talking to the MLS, honestly, and figuring some of that stuff out. And then just try, just make a checklist of everything. I would just make mine on a Word document is what I started off doing. Eventually, you can put that up into like the cloud and do like a Google thing and like do a Google sheet. Feel free to do that because at some point you may have a 
virtual assistant or someone working from home that's going to help you with some of that stuff and make sure that it all gets done and you stay on track. But in the beginning, whatever you need to do, just start making a checklist. Then start thinking through things. Okay, they just signed up with me. If they're new, I need to get a headshot photo done, right? Like they have to have that, um, you know, setting up a website with a URL. Maybe they want that certain branding things. We've got to order signs and open house signs. We've got to make sure they've got lock boxes, all that kind of stuff. So just start thinking through all the little things that you have to do and just start making a checklist. And so as you go, you know, maybe you order them a name tag, you know, there's lots of little things. And then you've got to do an office tour with them. If you have an office, make sure they have a key to get in there. They know how to do stuff, get them synced up with the printer and all that stuff. Do you have checklists that you use in your brokerage? Like how do they get logged into that stuff? What's your marketing? Do they know the structure when they take a listing what happens just start thinking through all those little things that like okay if they get an escrow then what happens do i need to make, add some of that to the onboarding process if they get a listing then what happens do i need to add some of that to the onboarding process and so getting them synced up with logins and different things like that help them keep track of their passwords and just help them basically like try to stay organized as they make a move both new agents and experienced agents get kind of overwhelmed when they're moving so one of the smartest things you can do is help smooth out that process for them, help them understand what's going on and what time frame, and just help them stay organized so that they don't get frustrated and then start thinking, oh, maybe I made a mistake and I shouldn't have moved. It really just comes down to you trying to be organized, but that's really how you do it. And just start making checklists and they'll always grow. They'll always change. They'll always get better because you will forget things. But Every single agent you hire, it starts growing and it starts expanding and eventually you really get your system down. And then you can, you, a lot of that you have to teach to an assistant at some point as you continue to grow. So that's why it's important for you to put those systems in place now and start getting organized. So really those are my best tips for you for how to onboard an agent. I know for a lot of people it's intimidating. It's like, okay, recruiting is its own animal for sure. And then as you start getting people to come on, like how do I organize that? How do I put together a system? So I ended up just really making a checklist. And as the years grew, um, I ended up with a double sided piece of paper that was legal size. And it was like, okay, this person does this part of the onboarding. This person does this part. This person does this. And so you start, you know, doing that as you grow. But in the beginning, it's probably you and maybe an assistant. So just try to get organized with what all the steps are. And then eventually you can start delegating those off to other people just to help it go faster and to get more consistent with how you do it. But really just focus on that agent feeling good, be really available for them as they're making the change because that's a vulnerable time for them where you don't want them to have buyer's remorse. Plus other agents that saw that they moved want to hear that they had a great experience onboarding with your company, not to give you a lot of pressure, but you know, just think about that when they need something, they're texting, they're calling you. And even if they're not, make sure you stay in real consistent, you know, conversation and communication with them to make sure they're doing okay. And they're not feeling overwhelmed because sometimes they don't come to you and tell you what's bugging them and that they need help. They won't ask for it, but you have to find out. And so doing a great job is actually what's going to help you grow and bring on more agents because your reputation will grow and, you know, just make the process smooth. And then agents feel like they made the right decision and will join you. Thanks so much for your time. If you like what we're doing here on the channel, feel free to subscribe and like our channel and we'll see you on the next video.